more questions. So uh, let me introduce you now our final speaker for this uh, session. This is uh, Professor Anna Tostoes, uh, president of Docomomo International and the editor of Docomomo Journal uh, from uh, Technical University of uh, Lisboa. So please, the title of her presentation is The Education for a Sustainable Future, the Role of Modern Heritage Reuse. Okay, may I? Yes. Can I have the, the, the screen? So I would like to start by thank you very much for this very challenging invitation in this kind of uh, webinar. So I would like to greet the Ersus project. It's a very, very interesting uh, application and now a very interesting content discussion. Um, and of course, I would like to uh, say good morning to everyone. Um, and uh, once again, to, to greet my colleagues more directly from Sevilla University, but I'm very happy to be in Belgrado uh, as well. So hello everybody. It was a pleasure to listen to Stefano Francesco Musso. Uh, I was really amazed by the, the, the Noto, the Noto, which is a fantastic place I visit. Uh, you know, in the other times of the life um, with connections with Lisbon and the, the reconstruction after earthquake. And it was amazing. But this is something for perhaps the round table. So hello, everybody. I would like to greet Mar Loren uh, very specially. And if you allowed me, I will start with my presentation. Um, yes. Are you your presentation? Are you um, with the full screen? Uh, no, we don't see your presentation. We see you, your camera, but not the screen. Okay, so perhaps I must uh, take here the share screen. Yes. Not yet. It's coming. Yes. yes. Now, yes. Okay. So may I start? And um, I think this is very interesting to, to take the, the word after uh, Stefano Francesco Musso, uh, because I'm going to, to talk mostly uh, on, let's say, modern movement uh, heritage. Uh, and I would like to, to stress, uh, of course, the importance of uh, heritage in architectural education and, 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 and research. Uh, and as well to um, develop very quickly, of course, the question of the documentation and the conservation, uh, which stands um, as a key of the organization I'm, um, let's say, uh, chairing for 12 years, long time. Uh, for the moment, we have um, quite uh, a world uh, at the moment, uh, and um, we try uh, to keep in mind this idea of uh, reutilization, of renovation, reuse, restoration. I would like to um, talk about all the different approaches we could have concerning uh, 20th century uh, heritage. Uh, of course, there are plenty different layers depending of uh, the cases. But the most important thing is that uh, the idea that the, the heritage is something that we should use. It's not uh, just an object or just, you know, uh, an icon. It's, 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 it's something that in fact belongs to the community and to the society. And to arrive to this point, uh, we all know that uh, um, 20th century, uh, let's say built environment or architecture um, is not so well recognized as uh, truly 
heritage. Um, and for instance, one of the tasks of the Komomo is to spread um, to common people uh, this idea. Uh, and so we create some years ago, five years ago, this kind of um, application for our mobile phones uh, with uh, the heritage of the world and we call it the Dokomomo virtual exhibition, the Mo Move, so it's the modern movement, the Mo Mo uh, moving. Uh, and so it's an application very, very clear that we, we can use when we are in a place to, to realize what we can visit and with some uh, further information. Of course, uh, we work a lot in, uh, let's say, classic uh, diffusion with books. Uh, I would like to just highlight this one we did with our uh, Chinese chapter, uh, which are the key papers in modern architectural heritage uh, conservation. And of course, we have the Dokomomo Journal uh, twice a year, and now we are preparing the 65th journal. So um, we, let's say, approach different issues, different themes. Uh, and recently, for the first time, uh, we took occasionally uh, some, uh, let's say, uh, special legacies from architects, the case, for instance, of Louis Kahn. Um, but the, the journal really stressed the question of how to conserve it and um, what is the meaning of the legacy of these architects uh, for the future uh, in terms of documentation and conservation? But as well, uh, other issues, for instance, uh, this one, uh, which is very um, special for all the Mediterranean uh, area, the, the question of the tourism. Uh, and very recently, uh, it was a, a, a kind of a shock in March when I, I wrote the editorial because we, we were preparing this issue for a long time on cure and care issues. And we were in, in complete pandemic one year ago. So it was in a way terrible, but in another way, really interesting to realize that um, we are following, you know, the, the great questions of, 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 of our time. And so, uh, I must hurry up because I believe uh, I should take my 20 minutes. And now uh, I would like uh, to share with you some case studies that perhaps could be uh, a good point for the discussion on this question of built environment, uh, sustainability, and how uh, to, uh, let's say, um, construct uh, knowledge and at the same time uh, discuss um, with the society and educate uh, future professionals. And I would like to start uh, with this um, very um, special case, which is, uh, as you can see, uh, a common uh, housing development uh, in Geneva. Uh, and it's quite interesting because this um, great complex uh, with 10,000 uh, inhabitants, it's quite, a, you know, a mega structure um, from the 60s. Uh, it was, let's say, fated to be destroyed, as we know, lots of um, places and, 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 and uh, uh, housing complexes, um, at least in Europe and in North America, that are being destroyed because they don't fit anymore the regulations, people don't love them, etc. But this case was very, very interesting because the Ecole Polytechnique um, Fédérale de Lausanne, the, the, the la, on modern um, sustainability and modern architecture took uh, this issue in 2010 and they start there to document age, to study and involving uh, students. And the interesting thing is that they were able to prove to the authorities with 
let's say, a deep research, that it was possible perhaps to not really restore, but to rehabilitate this complex. Uh, because there was, of course, as we can imagine in Switzerland, uh, lots of climate uh, challenges um, that this um, great complex was uh, addressing. So um, there was the conviction in the heritage uh, medias that it was too expensive um, to restore uh, these uh, um, wall uh, window curtain. And so uh, with this deep research, to justify that it could be um, a balance between all the cultural aspects of this uh, housing complex, because it was really interesting, uh, the fact that in these 60s, this complex um, had a program, of course, of housing, uh, of some facilities, for instance, uh, swimming pools in the in the terraces, but as well um, equipments and facilities, uh, for instance, for three different uh, religions. Uh, there's the 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 the, the religions um, places as well as commercial and so on. So this was a kind of a, um, housing uh, unit, uh, unité d'habitation uh, with uh, this kind of uh, landscape environment uh, near the Rhone, the, the river. So the people, they really loved very much to live here. And there was so a mix of social activity uh, with the work of the university, um, with this education key uh, aspect, um, confirming uh, the possibility of this rehabilitation and with the financial um, quantification in order to prove that this could be possible. And it was amazing because I always remember uh, this was published uh, in the Docomomo journal of 2011. The next year, uh, this, let's say, project won the Europa Nostra uh, uh, and then um, the Swiss awards from the, the board of architects and engineers. And now it is quite finished, the re restoration, and it's really a success uh, when at the beginning of the story, uh, all um, the, um, the aspects perhaps told that it was a, a lost cause. And so I would like now to move to another um, example, this is the, the, the German school in Lisbon. It's a, a, one of the latest projects of Otto Bartning. Otto Bartning, as you know, it's a, a very interesting architect he, from Germany. He worked a lot in, in um, school programs. And this, this is one of the last ones. And it's really, really amazing. And it was necessary, you know, to, to uh, make some new buildings in this complex. And fortunately, uh, the school um, spoke with different people, board of architects and so on. And um, they accept to make a competition. And it was very, very good because uh, with this competition, it was possible to make the difference between this project and, and almost of the others, because the others, they didn't care really about the existing uh, building, which is the one you can see here. Uh, and this is the solution um, that considered that the existing building should reuse, be in reuse. And so they tried to uh, put and this is from Caril de Grasse uh, project and 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 there was made a, a quite of research based design I, I could say and so they uh, try to uh, put let's say the primary new school you know near the borders creating a kind of uh, acoustic barrier because there's a, a, a big traffic 
um, line here, and then the new gymnastic uh, area in the other board. So with this uh, strategy to put the new constructions in the borders, or in the limits of the plot, they were in fact able to restore um, the school from the fifth uh, and to rebuild uh, or, or to make, let's say, new, um, new spaces, to build new spaces in accordance, in a way, uh, with the spirit of the existing uh, place, as well as uh, restoring uh, the interiors uh, with, let's say, the same philosophy uh, and keeping the, um, um, all the windows and the frames and so on. It was really an amazing work. And now my proposition is to move to Asia and let's see what happens in, in, in Japan. And, and as we know, all uh, the seismic question is really a key part for uh, the, the way we may uh, um, address heritage in, in Japan. And so um, this, this example, this is a, a Kenzo Tange uh, work from the uh, post-World II uh, War. Um, and this uh, prefecture, which is a, a municipality, a council, um, this building was, of course, not answering anymore uh, to the, the seismic security standards and should be demolished and built another one. And once again, thanks to a deep work of documentation, research, analysis, um, it was possible to find um, different solutions. Uh, it was the same that we saw very, very quickly on Lignon, so these, these lines. Um, in order to balance, you know, all the cultural values, the financial um, uh, necessities, and in this case as well, uh, the seismic answers. And uh, finally, uh, it was possible for this prefecture of uh, um, Kagawa to restore and to uh, apply a retrofit, a seismic retrofit. And just very, very quickly, this is another fantastic case, once again from Tange. Uh, and it's amazing because this place, which is Kofu, um, after the war, there was nothing. It was completely destroyed. And so um, this kind of uh, Yamanashi broadcasting and center for the population, uh, who rebuilt their little houses was, you know, the, 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 the community um, icon or the community um, key uh, point to put everybody together. Uh, it was the TV, it was the radio and as well the football uh, team. So you can imagine. So this was the icon of the place. And so it was incredible, this, this, this project, this answer for, from Tange. And as well, it arrives the same problem. It should be destroyed because of all the seismic, uh, let's say, regulations. And so all the community was together in order, you know, to make this retrofit uh, from the structure, which is uh, incredible work, as we know even in financial terms. And it has been finished in 2017 perfectly. And so very, very quickly, because of our 20 minutes, I, I'm not able to talk about this question without uh, keeping in mind Lina Bardi from Brazil. Lina Bobardi was a woman architect, Italian, as you know, a Roman a lady uh, who immigrated to Brazil. And what is amazing in the work of Lina is the moment when she faced uh, uh, a factory with no use anymore, and she was able to involve uh, the community 
and the young generation as well in an incredible research project in order to keep the factory as it was. This factory was the reason, the, the being reason of this place. Everybody worked in this factory and it was no more uh, used. And we, we are talking about the 70s. So this is a very, very avant-garde project of reuse and reutilization. And so with this action, this uh, activity, this, this quite politic activity, it was possible to reuse um, the, the material structure uh, with uh, sports facilities with swimming pools with all of the this stuff as well as with uh, cultural uh, facilities like uh, uh, libraries uh, art uh, um, uh, displaying places so i think that uh, this sesc pompeia uh, as a leisure center and a sports center is in fact a, a kind of an avant-garde um, action um, towards what we are dealing now 40 years after you know uh, with this um, discussion on documentation conservation and reuse and just to end very very quickly um, a work that I was very, very much involved in, and And it was once again, the result of a deep research done for a long time, I would say 10 years on this very, very special building, quite, uh, let's say a classical modern movement building, but very, very, uh, I would say not iconic at all. Um, it's a very, very discreet, uh, construction uh, in a way quite humble, uh, of course, with very, very good materials. And as Leslie Martin um, recognized, uh, this building will be a classical in the more fundamental sense that it arises from the well proportioned and logical solution to a very special problem. And so, you know, to intervene in such a building, it's really hard stuff it's difficult and and so all the story of the building the story of the construction was coming to light and thanks to this deep uh, research on construction and on all the social and 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 cultural aims of the place it was possible uh, in a process of 12 years of renovation and maintenance and conservation the last intervention was in the auditorium which was the 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 most delicate one and it was amazing to work um with all these questions uh, as we all know today to um, answer to the normative and the new rules of security, all the security matters, fire, um, um, escape, safety, acoustic, terrible discussions with the acoustic guys of the Gulbenkian Foundation. They wanted another auditorium, you know, with another sound. And we resist and said, no, this is impossible because there's a, uh, there's a, um, an ambience a kind of an immateriality that we should keep. And it was a terrible fight, I may tell you, my friends, but we we won. And also with the fire guys, they wanted, you know, to, to put here, oh, I may move. They want to put here, I mean, between the, the auditorium and the stage, uh, a concrete portico to have the, 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 the security curtain working. And it was a terrible discussion, but we won because we discovered a way to open all the windows of the foyer in order to be escape doors. So this is 
a work that we must deal um, as architects, but with all the other disciplines and all the other intervenients um, of, uh, of society. And of course, in this case, it was possible to work like this because it was already recognized as national monument. Because if it was not a national monument, as you Italian say, there was no deroga. It was not possible, you know, to escape uh, from the firemen. That's the question. So I would like to praise in a way that what we call um, all these recognitions, for instance, now um, um, Gulbenkian Foundation is the is in the, the list for a world uh, heritage from UNESCO. And this is very important, not just to have the label, you know, to involve community, all the people. Without people, there's no heritage. So very quickly, one, research, documentation, knowledge, keys for responsible intervention. The conception, research-based design is a working in progress normative security comfort and finally education strategy for the heritage preservation so that's why i greet very much ersus and please go ahead and we are here to support you thank you so much i keep more five minutes well uh, you're excused <laughs> fantastic many thanks I, I finished. <laughs> thank you wonderful presentation really thank you so much and uh, once again, it's uh, such a pity that we are not uh, all here together in person because uh, throughout the session, we had uh, really lively discussions and uh, comments and uh, many thoughts on those issues that we addressed uh, this morning. So uh, thank you, Anna, once again. Let me check with the, our team. Do we have some pending questions here? No? Thank you. So. Uh, Sorry, now we have. So, uh, we have a one hand raised, just a second. Uh, my Lorenz, thank you. There you go. Hello, thank you, Natasha, for your moderation. And thank you very much, Anna, for being here today. Um, it was, as always, uh, a pleasure to listen to you, to learn, to learn with you. Uh, and with all this positive energy you put on the table, uh, although we are not together today, uh, this is very important, all this emotion within heritage. So thank you very much. Um, so the other thing I want to point out is the, um, the uh, one thing that it was wonderful, um, how you uh, point out the importance of the more modest architecture, even when they are very modest, very invisible, uh, you are working on that. And in the end, you won. I, I, I love the fact that you say we won on that. So this is, this is wonderful. Um, the other thing is that although there is a lot of creativity in project intervention, so we are still architects, it's so important the research, the documentation, all the effort, you show us uh, through all your work. So thank you for sharing that and give us hope that we can get that also if we are worried about our own heritage, right? And finally, uh, the education, how we transfer that to education, to community, and how we position ourselves in a very interdisciplinary real process, as you told us. So I want to... Um, of course, congratulate you for the, the great work of Docomomo International on you as, as, as its president. And I wanted to ask you, Anna, what is the challenges we have ahead of us? Because you are our, our professor of, of, on that. So what are the, 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 the great challenges we have in terms of uh, modern heritage and all these vectors? We are talking here, education, uh, uh, rehabilitation, the, the challenges you think, Anna. Thank you very much. Congratulations for your wonderful work. Thank you very much for the question and, 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 and for the statement, I would say. Uh, I think um, 
you you touch a very important point, which which is these invisible uh, arch architects. Um, I mean, there's a, a a huge amount, for instance, in housing in Europe. I think we have um, an incredible uh, experimentation uh, work, um, mostly after the World War II. For instance, Italy, it's incredible. All you, you go to Trieste, you go to Turin, you go to Naples, uh, you go to Rome. It's amazing the things. You go to the former Yugoslavia. There's incredible, um, um, let's say, uh, uh, new uh, solutions. And in Europe, it's a, it's, it's a pity that we don't know all these cases and they could be uh, lessons for the future. I think that modern movement, it's, it's architecture, it's important mostly. Um, you know, not everything is good. There was lots of errors in urbanist terms, et cetera. Of course, it's not the, just the blame of architecture. It's a society and a capitalist system, you know, um, that uh, with, with the great speed, uh, but but architects have a mission and urbanists have a mission and we all as society we have a duty and so I think housing is uh, in my point of view uh, one of the great issues and and, and keys um, to work on and I'm trying to do it uh, and so I just tell you that uh, I would like very much to make uh, an European project on ish on on this issue, and perhaps we could join our our uh, energy um, in order to first look to know, and to realize what which are the cases that could resist to the twenty first century, uh, and perhaps the other ones that we may may forget, and of course, um, and what we could learn from these uh, invisible uh, architects that are not, you know, in the books. Uh, this is another history. We all know that the, the historiography is mainly done in English, and we are talking in English now. Um, and so there was a kind of a, a lack uh, of information um, during uh, lots of decades, I would say. Uh, and so it's time, and I'm sure that all these inputs from Europe and these Erasmus Plus uh, and the, all the Erasmus program, I think, if I may say, it's the most revolutionary action of all Europe, you know, it's to, to put uh, the, the young generations together. Uh, and now the ones who start are not so young anymore. Uh, and so we have uh, we are uh, crossing uh, generations and in, in terms of education, and this is really very, very, very important. Just to finish, uh, I would like to say that it's in fact very different, the cases that uh, where we can talk about the restoration. And you know, I was involved in the restoration of the Tugendat house in Brno, in Czech Republic. The, the house from uh, 99 uh, designed by Ludwig Mies van der Rohe and Lili Reich. And it's very important because there's a woman behind or, or perhaps in front, but for us it's behind. But the thing is that the result is fantastic. And this was a case of a restoration in a way. Restorations are always, you know, a little bit of invention, but let's say this house deserved I would say to be restored and to put lots of money just to make a museum. But in other case, I think that the reuse and the transformation could be very, very much welcome. Um, you know, this heritage of the 20th century um, could adapt to, to, to new times and this is the way to be sustainable. Sustainable in all the levels, economy, cultural, social, and material. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Anna, for this really inspiring uh, end of this uh, session. Thank you all for attending this and uh, until our next meeting. Uh,
uh, I wish you all nice remain of the day. And uh, while we are still with more architecture I just have to say that we pride ourselves with uh, our heritage in modern architecture that was uh, acknowledged uh, uh, through the great exhibition in MoMA a couple of years ago Concrete Utopia Anna would know about it I'm sure but uh, the rest of the Hersus people this is a good moment maybe to introduce you to this part of our architectural heritage that is uh, very important to us thank you